Hi, today I'm going to be doing a crush grind pepper mill with a salt shaker in the top. So just to say a bit more about that, it was inspired by this one that I've got um, at home. So I'm not going to be doing it in plastic, uh, but I'm going to do it in wood. So there's the crush grind, the mechanism's at the bottom, but this one has got a screw top and the salt is in the top so you can shake the salt and grind the bottom so i thought i'd do one uh, like that in uh in wood uh the crush grind mechanism this is the record power ones that i bought a bundle of i think they're all pretty much the same they have a uh a bottom section and a top section the top section here needs to be gripped uh in the body of the mill at the top and the bottom section gripped in the body of the mill at the bottom and there's a joint uh, which you probably can't see too well because of the light but there's a joint here and that moves this stays still and this moves that's a crush grind mechanism there are other mechanisms uh, which um, involve a shaft which is a traditional one and the shaft turns at the top and all the grinding is done at the bottom like that that's a craft pro kit which is a simple one uh, which is um, again got the shaft um, and you can also get types this one's an old one in a bag where the handle is on the top and there's a shaft and the grinding is done at the bottom um, and you can get kits for those this is an extract from the Axminster instructions on what they call the wood crush grind and you'll see from that that you need to drill a variety of holes a 25 millimeter 38 millimeter and 44 45 millimeter diameter hole uh, so that's best done with a forstner drill or series of forstner drills i actually use one that is uh, an adjustable width one which uh, you'll see me use later on this is an axminster one um, it uh, isn't the easiest one to use because it is an outrigger leg as opposed to a forstner which has got um, teeth all the way around but use carefully as this is carbide um, this substitutes for quite a few individual drills to enable the upper section to be gripped by the top part of the pepper grinder so that you can actually turn it you need to grip the smaller section of the barrel in the upper part and uh, as you can see from that image there's a section that's labeled 30 mil diameter and it's 14.8 millimeters up very exact to create that little notch you need to make or buy a special tool that just allows you to go around the corner and create that notch you can also use the same tool for thread chasing as well which i will show you later on so in the past i've ground an allen key into like a side scraper stuck it in a handle and found that it's quite useful for doing the notch and it's easy to do. Um, just put a bit of tape on it and it gives you an eyeball as to where it is. But there's a better way, I think. So I've got an old uh, flat scraper uh, that's just carbon steel um, from uh, Simon, one of the turning group. And I'm just gonna mark it up so that I've got a recessed cutting tool, uh, but that's uh, got a flat body to it and I'll be able to uh, pop it into the recess more easily. So I've just popped the uh, tool handle into the chuck jaws and used that as a temporary vice. So I'm just using the, uh, the Dremel uh, to cut out the notch and grind it up. So first I've used one of the thin cutting wheels and after I've uh, cut out most of it, I've then uh, resorted to a little mini grinding wheel just to shape and profile it better. So there it is. It will have the ability to sit flat on the tool rest and allow me, you can see the tool, you can see it's bent there, uh, but that will allow me to uh, just have a bit more support than the Allen key. So I've got a spindle blank, uh, which at this stage I'm not quite sure what the wood is. Uh, just mark up the centers. This is about 50 to 60 mil square so that there's enough meat left for you to do some shaping and it's about 250 300 mil long the length is up to you so first you need to choose a chuck uh, the, and uh, put some tenons on so that you can um, grip the wood in the various stages that you need to do so 
Now I've made the mistake here of using a small 35mm set of chuck jaws because I was preoccupied on making sure that I got some chuck jaws that I could open into expansion mode because after you've actually drilled the Forstners, the 44mm hole, you need to grip it uh, in an expansion mode, which you can do with the jam chuck or you can do with expansion on these jaws. But anyway, uh, my recommendation is that you use standard C jaws or standard jaws at this stage and create tenons for that. And you'll see why later on that's important. So turn it around with a spindle roughing gouge and then put the tenons on either end using a parting tool. The base section of the pepper grinder has to be exactly the right size to enable the crush grind mechanism to fit in and for it all to socket in perfectly. That uh, drawing shows you that basically you need, I think it's 69 or 70 mil total dimension of the base. So I've marked up 70 mil and now I'm just going to part it off. So I just pop the uh, base section into the chuck jaws and then get on with drilling the holes. But I do fortunately have an Axminster um, Evolution carbide tipped adjustable uh, Excalibur thingy. So the first hole is going to be the 44mm diameter, 19mm um, deep recess, uh, which will uh, house the base of the crush grind mechanism. Just running at about 450 revs, take it easy and check the depth regularly with a depth gauge. Really important that you get this to exactly 19mm, so take your time. That's the first hole. The second hole has to be 38 millimetres and it goes all the way through this base section. So I've measured the depth of the wood and I'm going to drill a hole now so that it falls short of the um, chuck jaws and then I'm going to reverse it and finish off from the other side. I got a crack. Because I've messed up with the jaw sizes, I now need to reverse it and drill the hole from the other end. Well, doing that with the 35mm jaws, which fit perfectly into the 44mm recess, but doing that in an expansion mode would have just blown this piece apart. After it's glued up, I've now put it in um, a regular 50mm set of jaws just to lightly grip it with a tailstock um, wooden uh, live drive, uh, which I can, if necessary, uh, just cut into to just finish and dress the face and then sanding with the grain through the grits uh, just because uh, there were a couple of little minor dents from the chuck uh, and uh, that just gives it a beautifully smooth finish and then finish with some mineral oil so just chuck up the main body and uh, drill a 25 mil hole all the way through either using an extension bar on the Forstner, which I've got, or else rechucking in an expansion mode and drilling in from the other end to do the second half. So I'll drill the hole part way. I've now got my DIY cutter. So I'm now going to offer it up. So you can see now from that shot that it's cut the groove quite neatly. That recess needs to be exactly 15 millimeters in from the bottom and the way that I ground the tool means that it just dresses the base of the piece uh, so that it is exactly that dimension. So I've just chucked it up in expansion mode with a bit of support from the tailstock and I'll dress the face off so I now need to reduce the end 20 millimetres down to 38 millimetres or even a little bit less so that it fits a nice but not too tight a fit in the 38 mil bore in the base section. And then with it done, uh, just dress that face with a nice sharp edge of a skew so that you get a lovely uh, smooth finish with a very slight undercut because you don't want it grating on the surface of the bottom. You want it to be nice and smooth. I want it to be an easy fit that will turn because this is the where the top and the bottom spin, but you don't want it to be sloppy. 
The rebate tool has left a very slight telltale mark on the base, uh, which is uh, where the 15 millimeter dimension sits. So I'm just gonna dress off to that telltale, that small recess you can see on the inside, uh, so that then I've got an exact 15 millimeter fit for where the spigot of the um, base of the crush grind will go in. So I can now assemble the piece on the lathe and finish and profile the outside. And I'm making use of the tailstock with a uh, wooden profile jam chuck on it. Now this piece is going to have the top section converted into a salt shaker. Uh, so uh, whilst I'm profiling the main body, I also want there to be a, a section at the top with like a ball shape so that I can use that uh, for that um, salt container. Before I tackle that bit, I've uh, turned all the way across the two pieces to make sure that uh, you've got a, a blended finish, uh, done a, um, a couple of little V grooves and I'm then using some burn wire just to mask where the joint is so that you don't actually know which bit is uh, turning. So I've taken the bottom section away which is now profiled and finished uh, and put the uh, tailstock support up so I can profile the top end. So I've then added some matching uh, burn lines. So I've now reverse chucked it again, sanded and sealed uh, the body of it. I'm now going to reprofile and prepare the salt shaker section. A bit of finessing with a spindle gouge and then part it off. So the aim now is to screw thread the uh, body of the grinder to receive a bung that will be also screw threaded into the top section and also to screw thread an insert into the top which is the hole for shaking the salt out. So after I've faced off the top I now need to make a small uh, relief channel in the body so that when I do the screw threading I don't actually turn off the threads uh, by the thread chaser uh, bottoming out. So the tool I ground up to make the recess for the crushed grind is the perfect tool for creating this recess as well. However, um, with the rather weak grip that I'd got on the expansion mode on the chuck jaws, I realized that this wasn't gonna be stable enough to do the screw threading work. So uh, I need to rechuck. Right, so I've put on my medium-sized O'Donnells, which have got a nice cylindrical section in the middle. So I've gripped it this time in compression mode on uh, that uh, tenon, using those round section of the O'Donnell's and uh, just line it up now to make sure it is uh, perfectly uh, aligned using the tailstock before I take that away and go back to creating the groove and then getting on with the thread chasing. The relief groove only needs to be the uh, depth of the um, thread chasers which at 20 TPI mean that half a millimetre to a millimetre is good enough. Let's put a small lead on that edge just to take that right angle corner off these are 20 tpi thread chasers so the lathe is turned to, down to about 250 rpm uh, get the thread chaser at a slight angle so that the cutting point is actually on center and some little gentle strokes just on that leading edge just to let the tool start to cut the thread and then as it cuts just gently move it round so that it becomes parallel pretty quickly and allow those uh, teeth to start forming the threads and pulling you in. Make sure that you don't go beyond the rebate at the bottom, that's the purpose of it being there, is that it allows you to cut your thread up to it and uh, your thread chaser then hits the air space so you don't pull the threads off. This is all about being gentle, consistent, having a nice sharp uh, thread chaser. Let the tool do the work and uh, keep it parallel and steady. If it, you don't keep it steady, you'll get a wobbly thread. And you need a little bit of positive pressure uh, inwards towards where the cutting edge is uh, so that it doesn't uh, pull out of the cut action. The walnut seems to be taking the screw thread uh, well, uh, which is pleasing as I wasn't quite sure whether I was going to have to stabilize it with some super glue before I did the cuts, but I don't think I need to. It's uh, taking it nicely. 
So I've taken it off and you can see inside there what the thread is like. Uh, it's a bit tricky to see, but it's pretty clear really that I've got a reasonably good thread and you can see it going up to the recess. As I'm not totally sure how robust the screw threads will be on the walnut, I've decided to uh, soak the threads with some CA glue just to uh, stiffen them up in the longer term. And they'll need a bit of cleaning out afterwards with the thread chaser to make sure that the glue doesn't sit proud and jam up the screw threads. So I've got a piece of African blackwood here which I'm going to turn to round and I'm going to use it to create a bung that will go into the top of the barrel and it will also be threaded into the top of the salt shaker. The uh, first section of the blackwood is going to be glued in uh, to the base of the salt shaker uh, so that needs to be a nice tight fit which I can glue in and then I'm going to thread chase the uh, bottom uh, of the spigot that will be there uh, to fit the uh, screw threads I've just turned in the main body. So I've now turned that so I've got a recess here that is below the diameter of the bung and I've got a section here that's above the diameter of the bung which is where the screw thread's got to go. So again about 250 rpm I think. In a similar way to creating the female thread on the inside you start at a slight angle and just get those first teeth to uh, start making a little bit of a cut and then as the uh, thread chaser starts to actually uh, form a cut you just allow the uh, formed threads to gently pull you along and make sure that the tool is at right angles to the body of the actual uh, piece so that you get a parallel screw thread. When you first start you can't have it like that, you've got to have it at a slight angle to pick up the cut and then after you've picked up the cut you make it nice and right angles. Now you've got to reduce the male thread down to the diameter of the uh, already cut female thread but the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to try and reduce the uh, male thread with the thread chaser because if you do that all that you do is grind away the uh, tops of the uh, formed screw threads with the base of the thread chaser. So what you want to do is if the diameter is too big, uh, which it is in this case and it will be probably for several more cases, is gently take a little bit off with your bedan and then recut the thread. So don't take all of the thread off, uh, just take a bit of it off and then you reform it to the try and get a profile of the um, thread from the thread chaser and then rinse and repeat until you get a good fit. So I did this about six times to get it down to a diameter that fitted and also manually with the uh, thread chaser just went back into the threads that I'd put some super glue on on the walnut and just cleared those out a little bit because the super glue was a bit rough and also put a bit of wax on just to ease the threads to make it easier for it to run. So I just ran over that with a bit of NiWeb uh, just to smooth off any uh, rough edges and that's now ready to be parted off and glued into the bottom of the salt shaker. Before I glue that in though I've got to actually screw thread the uh, top where the hole will be for the salt to come out. So I've rechucked it in expansion mode and I'm now going to put the groove in. And after creating the rebate, I just uh, chamfered the edge very gently so that the thread chaser would have a lead in as I did before. So again, uh, 250 RPM, uh, cutting point on the edge, start at uh, an angle to get the thread chaser to pick up, very slight positive pressure inwards towards the cutting surface, then rotate the tool around so that it is parallel with the axis of the cut and then gently allow the thread chaser to pull the uh, tool in and create the thread and make sure you don't go beyond the recess otherwise you'll just simply turn all those threads off. So <clears throat> I've got to now turn uh, the top and the top um, for the uh, salt to come out has got to be
be able to be unscrewed from the body of the little salt shaker top so it has to be big enough to, for you to better grab hold of it so I'm going to create a domed top and a little knurled flat part uh, which is where I've just marked it out and then I will screw thread uh, to the right of that uh, so that it goes into the already threaded uh, top of the uh, salt shaker. Before profiling the top, I'm just going to drill a two mil hole all the way through, which is where the salt will be able to come out. I tend to find the very small drills wander, uh, so uh, I'm just creating a small little uh, recess with the tip of the skew, just to help the drill find its uh, centre and not wander. And then with that done, I can just profile the dome at the top with the spindle gouge. So I'm just now uh, using a V-tool to make a little mark and then I'm going to knurl it on the flat section to make it easier to grip. Before I do the knurling though, I'm now going to get the thread chaser out and thread chase the body. Uh, so I need a recess uh, close to the underside of the cap to give some clearance for the thread chaser at the start of the thread. Access is a little trickier uh, than it is when you're starting with a completely open end, but the principle is the same. Start at a slight angle and start the cut and then turn the thread chaser so that it's uh, at right angles to the workpiece. And make sure you've got enough clearance uh, for the thread chaser not to bang against the body at the end of the thread. I'm running it a bit tight here, I must admit. The diameter of the clear section has to be <clears throat> smaller or equal to the uh, diameter of the base of the screw threads so that when it's tightened up uh, you don't find that the plain section jams on the um, screw thread. So I'm just turning that down to make sure it's equal to or slightly smaller than that diameter. And having turned that down to as close as I can make it to the bottom of the pitch of the screw thread, I can now screw thread thread chase the um, the male part down uh, to that diameter. So what I'm doing is I'm uh, chasing the thread down to the point where the um, first thread just starts to cut into the blank uh, section and then I know that that's pretty close to the diameter I need it to be. Now I don't need all that screw thread so I'm just removing some of it that I won't need. Right, I'm going to knurl it with uh, an Axminster knurling tool. And then I can't actually test the screw thread uh, until I've parted it off, so that's what I'm going to do. And I decided in my own mind that if uh, I can't get the screw thread to fit accurately, then I will just grip it on the knurled section and rechuck it, uh, which may be necessary because measuring it is not the best way. You need to better test fit it. Now I could try this off camera, or am I going to just try it on camera? I'm just going to try it on camera. Oh, that fits. Oh, does it go in properly? It's a pretty good fit. Uh, it's just a little tight. So I think I might have a slight taper on one of the threads. So uh, before I do anything dramatic, I'm just using a bit of uh, 240 grit just to take the edge off that inside thread and just see if I can get it to fit a bit better. And a little bit of wax will always help as well. I don't want all this at the bottom, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand some of that off so uh, that it's not quite such a big lump at the bottom. I'm going to do that on the belt sander now. So I've just flattened the bottom off on the uh, bench sander, uh, and what I'm doing now is just uh, drilling the inside out on the pillar drill so that the actual 2mm hole, which of course can block up as salt gets damp, is only about 5 mil long to make it easier to clear out. I used a small forstner so that it would follow the hole that was already there. So a quick burnish of the top uh, and then lightly gripped in the uh, small chuck jaws so that I can then glue the uh, insert into the salt shaker. Okay, so these are the constituent bits. 
just thinking about it, uh, this is a prototype. Um, the the bung, even though I've got a hole in it, it does mean that it can't get a lot of salt in here because I didn't hollow it out. Uh, probably need to do a different shape or a bigger head so that you can get more actual salt in it. Uh, but in terms of the wood turning, it goes on nicely, screws on tight. I'll just put some paraffin oil on, it's still a bit damp at the moment, mineral oil, food safe stuff, that goes on nice and tightly. So it looks nice, I think. Uh, and all I've got to do now is get the, the bottom on. So um, the crush grinder's got these spines on the side that grip, quite a nice tight fit. You've got to be able to push up on that. And I've discovered that the uh, regular 35mm jaws just the right size for this to sit like that so that when you push like that it pushes into the the tangs uh, and doesn't damage it so this now got to go on here and i got to see if this is actually going to go on <laughs> yes it works um that's it and that's now clicked into the recess. So there we have my first combined salt and pepper uh, grinder shaker. Yeah, that's all right. I'll oil that up, give it a bit of a buff, and call it a day. So there we have it. A few pictures of the finished piece. Uh, the walnut, I have to say, I think has come out really nice and uh, it's still just finished with mineral oil, which means that as it's used in the kitchen, as this will be probably, that uh, it'll just get richer as time goes on.